I'd now like to welcome to the stage um, the Mr. Honorable R.S. Sharma, Chairman of the Telecom Regulator Authority of India. A very good morning to all of you, my friends on the dais. Uh, a few days back, uh, the FTTH council members had gone to invite me. And I said, look, this is an idea which is very, very close to my heart. I have been speaking about connectivity. And if there's one word which kind of uh, has been uppermost in my mind since last about, let's say, six, seven years that I've been working in this area, starting from my Aadhaar days, that has been connectivity because I am convinced that if we have to go forward, if we have to take this, we have to participate in this digital world, the most important aspect of this is the connectivity infrastructure. Uh, and, and that is how, you know, the Digital India vision of the Honorable Prime Minister. Connectivity was the first and the most important pillar of that vision of Digital India. Because everything else will work only when you have robust connectivity. And I've been making this point that somehow, you know, from the uh, fixed line connectivity when we went to a mobile revolution, we just forgot these fixed lines, the forgot these copper lines and the ports, as they say, plain old telephone system. We just forgot about them. And we, you know, went mobile, and that has been a wonderful revolution. There's no doubt about it. And you know, all of us celebrate uh, the work which, which our country has done. And we are a very vibrant uh, mobile market. In terms of customers, we are number two in the world. And that's not a mean achievement. And, and, and mobile companies, they have done really wonderful work to make India connected. Today we have, we boast of more than a billion mobile connections. And we boast of, you know, one of the minimum rates, the cheapest rates, uh, you know, when we go out and talk as to what is the mobile rate per minute or per second, whatever parameter you take, people just don't believe it. So it's a great work which has been done. However, now there's a next phase in some sense, and, and this phase has been happening since so much of time. We have been feeling, all of us who have been working in the area of space of e-governance, that the connectivity, the kind of connectivity which you require for doing all kinds of e-governance applications, that simply does not exist. Though there have been a huge improvement in the bandwidth due to wireless things, but let me just give you an example. I was in... Uh, uh, Jharkhand. I've been working there in Bihar and Jharkhand throughout my life, my career. So we started what is called a statewide area network way back in 2003. And the whole concept of a statewide area network was that we will have all these offices going down to the block level from the district. And we heard about 24 districts and we heard about 65 subdivisions and we had 220 blocks so overall about 300 offices and then of course many other offices at the district level so about 1000 offices you know at the district level you have 15 20 offices cooperative medical registration commercial taxes all kinds of departments so the idea was that we should connect everybody uh, all these offices uh, through a, you know not fiber really but through lease lines at that point in time and we did connect. And what happened was that, you see, in a connected world, the entire way of doing things completely changes. So for example, when you, when you started long back, uh, let's say computerizing transport offices. So we were actually collecting vehicle taxes. And that, uh, for your information, we started way back in 1992. In 1992 in Bihar, in five cities of Bihar, 
we started online, or on, not only online, across the counter collection of transport taxes. At that point in time, they were not connected. So one vehicle could not pay tax to another district because the other district did not have the information about the tax payment status in the previous district. So, but once you had connected things, then you don't need to have these distributed servers and every district headquarter. You can just, you know, put it in the, in the data center at Patna. And now, of course, you can put it in the cloud. So the entire paradigm of doing things completely undergoes a change. The whole software development process, the whole mindset as to how I develop my softwares and things, that whole thing changes. Portability comes, you know, when I have a public distribution system and, and you know, when, when I'm talking these things, I'm talking from the viewpoint, how connectivity affects a poor person also. It's not really all of us who are watching, you know, videos and high stream news uh, on the, on the, our iPads. That's not really the real use case in India. The real use case in India is when I go and take my ration from a public dis distribution shop how, whether I can get facilitated or not. So when the Russian distribution is taking place, there are 600,000, in fact, 500,000 shops, PDS shops in, the India, in India. It is one of the largest distribution networks anywhere in the world of, you know, distribution of goods and, you know, ration, sugar, kerosene oil, LPG, and stuff like that. So there, if a person goes and, you know, he takes his or her ration, then in a connected world, now that he acquires a freedom to take ration from any shop, because then everything is connected. So you acquire portability. You acquire portability of entitlements. So the, the way things are done completely undergoes a change. Now, if this infrastructure, obviously, it is depending on connectivity. If this connectivity infrastructure is not robust, it is not reliable, it is not ubiquitous, then the entire system works. System doesn't work. And unfortunately, you know, some protagonists, even today, they say, oh, de design solutions for both online and offline. You know, let's, let's, have, let's use online wherever it is available. Let's not use... Now, if there, is, there are isolated systems which do not need to talk to each other, then probably this will work. But otherwise, having two parallel systems, one for offline, which can be equivalent of saying one manual, another is online, which is automated, it doesn't work. So therefore, and it's more inefficient. And un Unfortunately, the data updations don't take place. The data, once the data is not updated, you lose faith in the data itself. So there's a whole, you know, disruption which takes place in a situation where something is built for an online world and that online world crumbles. That is the situation. So connectivity, therefore, has been an extremely, extremely important part of any endeavor. And I think Every country which is, which is looking forward is actually investing a lot of money in building this digital infrastructure, in building this connectivity infrastructure. Swati was saying, somebody was saying that, you know, China is building how many billion kilometers of fiber they have laid in, 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 in China. So this is important because ultimately if we want to become future-proof, if we want to really deliver services through a medium which is robust, reliable, ubiquitous. You need to have a fixed line infrastructure. And, and obviously fiber is the way forward because fiber is, is cheap, fiber you know, can do things very quickly, it has got nearly infinite bandwidth, and imagine the consequences of an infinite bandwidth. I was reading a paper some months back, what if the bandwidth was infinite? And imagine, you know, all of you are all in this, this, you know, room connected with this fiber and bandwidth and computers. Think of, you know, process reengineering, process which will change if the bandwidth was virtually infinite. I mean, when you say infinite means as much as I want, put it this way. That could be another 
way of looking at infinity. As much as I want, it's available to me on demand, infinite. So this is, this is really something which we all need to focus or need to understand that if we have to go forward, India has to really leapfrog into this digital world and I think there's no reason why we should not because we have, uh, you know, all the components of digital India, they are there. India has a digital identity infrastructure which is so much required in digital world for doing digital transactions. India has been doing a lot of work in this area of, you know, financial inclusion, the cashless, the digital payment systems. So there are a lot of, you know, in fact, TRAI itself is thinking of using blockchain technology for doing, you know, all kinds of stuff. So we are all, you know, doing huge amount of stuff on software and systems. And we have what people describe as the India stack, which is really unique to India, which means we have an on-demand digital signature. We have a digital locker. We have the unified payment interface. We have USSD, I mean, NPC, all these robust systems are in place. What is not in place is an underlying digital infrastructure which is, which is really going to serve all these applications. And therefore, we must realize and do everything possible within our might to lay this infrastructure for future growth of our country. Everybody knows, you know, that if you have a 10% more, you know, penetration of internet, there is a growth of 1.4% in GDP. So those figures and those statistics are well known. The statistics that we are not really very far, you know, we are not really doing great thus far at least, is also known. And we need to change things. And a couple of, uh, you know, thoughts which many of you are aware, which I have been, you know, we have been working in TRAI. I just wanted to give and I just wanted to enlist your support for those initiatives and thoughts because doing a proof of concept, doing some kind of pilots in this area will be very helpful. So one of them is, you know, we, we are all aware as to what are the difficulties of taking fiber to home or fiber to any place, you know, offices, buildings, whatever. One of the problems is the right of way. Right of way is a very serious issue while you can lay fiber and you know in, in, in uh, rural areas across the roads uh, along the roads and all that that's probably easier to come by but uh, first of all the permission the right of way by the city and municipal authorities also the the inconvenience to people that the roads are dug every time a fiber is laid this is another uh, very serious uh, problem and of course, the, the fact that the state governments or municipalities feel that this is one opportunity to make money by way of, you know, putting some kind of charges. They don't realize that ultimately it is an infrastructure which is for the benefits of their own citizens. Sometimes they, you know, the short term takes over uh, the long term in some sense. So, so what uh, we are trying to do uh, in, uh, in um, one of the cities which is a, you know, tire three or tire two or something in between in, in my state of Jharkhand. Uh, and that I selected Jharkhand because uh, these, I keep on going there and the chief minister was very keen that, you know, we should do something there. And I proposed to him that, uh, uh, you know, your state was the first to establish uh, statewide area network way back in 2003. So therefore we should be first to establish certain things so what we have agreed on is essentially a common duct which will be laid in the city limits of Devghar. And the idea is as follows. There will be a, let's say there is a common operator who is, you know, basically an infrastructure provider, so to say, or infrastructure builder. He could be, that entity can be anything. We are not restricting that. That could come the government of Jharkhand will give two assurances to that entity. The first is that you will not be, uh, we will not charge any ROW, you know, money. We will not charge any right of the way fees from you. It will be free right of way given to you. Second assurance will be that there shall be no operator 
who will be allowed to dig the road for the next 20 years. So there will be no digging the road. Anybody who wants to provide connectivity through a fixed medium or a fiber will have to go through this common passage. So this entity will make a common duct where, you know, this will just, and they can probably pull some fibers also that we are agnostic to, uh, but whatever they want to do. So they will do that. Of course, they will be required to restore the land to its original shape, which is without a charge, but nevertheless the responsibility to restore that land. And they lay this, and the, the TCIL has done the survey, secondary Primary. roads, academic institutions, other kinds of institutions. So what are the demand side projections have been done? The roads and the length and, and, and existing, you know, uh, operators where they exist. And I must tell you that while the number of kilometers will be okay, there, there, are a number of, there are a number of operators. Unfortunately or fortunately, they have done all the same way. So while the running kilometers may become 3x, the actual kilometers on the road is just x because everybody has done the same, you know, x, so to say. So this way, not much really, it's not a green field, but it's not really that brown as well. This is now the, op the, the process selection of the operator will be done through bidding. Uh, and the third, of course, third condition to the operator should be that it should be a non-discriminatory access. It should not be that, you know, he, he doesn't like my face and therefore he doesn't want to provide me the fiber or, or the, you know, so it should be non-discriminatory. He will have to transparently disclose the rates and, and probably government of Jharkhand can also put some broad caps on the, depending on whatever they want to do. So essentially the, the bidding parameter will be how much money will they require as a capital assistance from the government of Jharkhand or they feel that this business model is very viable, how much money they will be able to give back to government of Jharkhand through annuities, so that, you know, the municipal corporation starts looking at this as a, as a revenue earning proposal. And of course, the, the, they, will have, they will build it, they will operate it, they will own it, and then do it for 25 years or 20 years, whatever is a tenure. So in a way, they will have the exclusive right to operate this, this duct and, you know, people can pull fiber, blow fibers, as you say. So this, this can happen. So this is the broad model. They, have, they are going to do an RFP, and I was telling some of my friends here that, you know, not from the point of view that it will be a beneficial or a business-wise great proposal, but from the perspective of saying that this is some effort which is being done and the whole objective is to prove a concept this this kind of sharing of infrastructure can work. It is not really sharing. It's actually infrastructure provisioning being independent of the operations or the service part of it. You have done it. India has shown an example of tower sharing, for example, in the telecom world. And we have also given recommendations in the broadcasting sector as to how many of the infrastructures which you create can be shared. And we are of the firm view that sharing at the back end does not in any way dilute the competition at the front end. You can still compete. So this is, the, this is one of the things which we are trying to do. And the whole idea is that if this can succeed, this will actually can be replicated very easily in many cities. And this will be required. This will be required for smart cities. This will be required for all the entire components of smart cities, whether it is transportation, light, uh, you know, sewage disposal and other kinds of uh, smartness which are to be built into the cities and its operations. So I think that is something which we should all, you know, all of us, if we can collectively figure out whether this will be a good model or not. And I'll, I'll recommend that, you know, in case you have any thoughts to give to the government of Jharkhand, you can just mail it to them or you can even give it to us and we'll forward it to them so that, you know, the whole idea is that collectively we are doing it with a view to ensure that, you know, things work out and we are able to create common infrastructure. We have also given, you know, in-building infrastructure sharing uh, uh, recommendations to the government. We also feel that the new buildings which are coming up now, you know, wherever, whatever 
has happened in the past, of course, one can have in building sharing of infrastructure. But whatever is to come now, these buildings must have, like they have the seaways pipe, they have the water pipes, they have the electrical fittings. They must have the, you know, provision for a fiber. This is so much required because that fiber can become the common facilitator or a common duct for, you know, provisioning the entertainment, the telecom services, or other kinds of services. So I think this is also, we must have in mind that we need this robust infrastructure for the next 25 years, next 30 years, or, you know, which is future proof and which can, which can deliver uh, us as the results of what we are planning by way of digital India. So I think that is so important. Uh, I also feel that, you know, this, uh, this whole issue of digital cable TV, and uh, I'm happy to say that there's a lot of traction in the government for this idea that the digital cable TV infrastructure, now, of course, I'm aware that uh, they may not be the fibers, but conversion of this coaxial cables or whatever to fibers is a relatively easy stuff. It's not, it's not a bad thing to happen. And, and you must understand that the cable TV operator has solved the ROW problem for you. Whichever way, you know, he has taken it from some tree and some roof or something else, but, but he has solved that problem. So in a way, one can have, you know, while one is thinking of a robust infrastructure which is under the ground and all that, it is also uh, easily doable because uh, for your information, there are 100 million cable TV homes. And fortunately, India has digitized the entire cable TV uh, thing in the last four phase, the 31st of March was the last day. So 100 million cable TV, cable TV homes will mean 500 million people which is uh, quite a substantial 40% of India's population. So I think we have the potential to cover this in the shortest possible time, and one can have a more robust infrastructure as you go by. I'm not saying that this is, this is the great, but you know, in a short run also we have to tackle the issue. One can't, in the long run, we are all dead as they say. So <laughs> one, should, one should think of short term also, and it is possible because we have lost out on that, you know, revolution because we just have 20 million you know fixed lines which have also become redundant and are reducing so therefore i think there is a need to do that on policy front uh, on the front of uh, uh, you know uh, doing things my view has been that this should not be thought only as a government of india problem this should not be thought only as a telecom problem. My view is that unless you make states as active partners into this entire endeavor, things will not work. Because if state thinks, oh, this is nothing, I have nothing to do with it. It is this, these guys from the government of India, from telecom ministry, from somebody else, they are doing it. I have nothing to do with it. Then their approach is completely different. But if the states become partners, they think it's my work. Because I have also been in the state, so I understand their, you know, psychology and every state has similar psychology. So they think that now, oh, this is my work, I will do it. That is why in the Bharat Net implementation also, we have made a very sustained plea since last about two years to the government saying that kindly implement it in the public-private partnership mode. The interest alignment is so important for success of every project. The alignment of interest will happen when the states feel it is their project, when the operator who is building the project feels that it is his project. He now has the responsibility of marketing it, building it, maintaining it. So then, you know, it becomes a, 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 the way to really, uh, you know, sort of sustain it. Otherwise, entity A will build it, then hand it over to entity B, who will maintain it, then he will have entities C, C1, C2, Cn, those entities which will use it. There will be an SLA between the government and those CIs. And if there is a fiber cut or something, they will, you know, there will be quarrels and cases and arbitrations. And then this guy who is maintaining it will say, I am maintaining it very well, you know. So this doesn't work. The whole thing will just not work. And that is why it is important that, you know, you have a very clear accountability and accountability is linked to his performance and his payment is linked to his performance and, and fulfillment of SLAs. 
So if you do that architecture, that has much more brighter chances of success than an architecture which is actually a government architecture, which is, you know, government makes it, maintains it, markets it, and, you know, there are certain things we are not great at doing. So, so it's better we should leverage the efficiency of the private sector with the, you know, regulatory functions and other kinds of overall support from the government side and make it happen. So I think there are a number of solutions which exist. And, and, and I am sure we are also having some other experiments like public Wi-Fi hotspots. This, in my view, will also, you know, improve because while this FTTH, and H, I think, it stands for home, right? Now, in India, where people have the per capita income to be quite low and they don't really have the wherewithal to really, they don't even have a home, for example, a Parma, I mean, somebody behind the temple, under the bridge, and those kinds of stuff. So it's very difficult to co operationalize this concept. But I think it is, is possible to have it, let's say, FTT, to one place, which is a central place in the village, for example, or, or some other you know, place. This way, if you have it, then from there, if you can radiate, if you can just sort of send it through Wi-Fi, that can be a workable model. So there again, you, you need to, but I mean, there's no denying the fact that we need fixed infrastructure as long as it can go. It need not go to every home because that may not be financially sustainable or viable, but I think we need to find our business models in this itself to ensure that we are able to take connectivity to each nook and corner of this country. I'm sure the deliberations here in this, um, you know, workshop, seminar, whatever, brainstorming, whatever you call it, it's really going to throw solutions which are of long-term interest to our country. And I think we should all, you know, as people of this country, we should all sit together and figure out as to how we can solve this problem. Because on this solution of this problem of connectivity depends the future of digital India and also depends actually now the growth of our country because more and more, you know, now you have 4G, 5G, all kinds of technologies. Now, ICTs were limited to only information and communications till now. When 5G happens, the applications areas are such completely diverse areas which have nothing to do with telecom. Agriculture, health, all these areas are completely, you know, not away, completely away from the telecom sector traditionally. And therefore, you are going to the telecom, this infrastructure is going to serve almost every sector of the economy. And therefore, it is of critical importance. Once again, thank you very much. And I also want to thank you for inviting me for this uh, seminar. I'll, I'll really feel privileged to be here with you. Thank you very much. dignitaries this morning for participating in this conference opening. I'd like to take a short intermission for the inauguration of the exhibition ceremony, which will be in the exhibition room next door. Thank you. <laughs>